Raise up my chair. Be tall and stuff. Last time somebody asked, oh, you still sat on her, so you still sat on the same side. This is just pretend Jeff. He's not here today. Once again, we're here for another solo video. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and especially teeny tiny board games, wallet board games, board gamey things. Today's video, a highly requested button shy collection tour, talk, showing of. Basically, you guys know, everybody knows that I'm super into button shy games. I recently got into them since late last year. And since I uh, started collecting them, I've, uh, I've really expanded my collection. These two bags are full. So I'm going to show you all of the button shy games that I currently own. And I will let you know the uh, grouping that I have on the way as well. So for anybody who doesn't know, Button Shy is a small board game publisher I believe they're located in New Jersey, and basically they produce 18 card wallet games. So this is how all of the button shy games come. They come in a little like leather wallet. They open up, all the cards are in here with the instructions. They have different designers that come in and create all of these different games. Some are designers that you already know and love and some might be new to you. They have all different kinds of games. Everything from solo games to party games, skirmish games, RPGs, everything in between. Maybe let's just get started with how I store everything. They have these adorable little like carry bags. So when you open up your little button shy, and I will shout out to Michelle from Second Start to Left because she did give me one of these. I got one for free at PAX because I bought so many things. And basically everything just kind of, whoop, everything just kind of sits in here like this. Now I am thinking about getting a different storage solution. I had an idea that I could get a storage unit that they would have used to use for like cassette tapes, which I did have as a child. So um, I think that would be a really good way to store them. All right, folks, let's get into it. Let's start with this bag. So I'm just going to go top to bottom. These are in no particular order and I will let you know what I've played, what I think about it, and I guess whether or not I've played it. But the first game that we have is Invino Morte. Now this is a party game and I actually have played this one. I brought it to a work party and everybody had a great time. This is by Chris Anderson and this is the pixelated version. So there is a regular in Vino Morte that's not pixelated, but this one comes with artwork that is pixelated. Basically in this game, you've got two kinds of cards. You have wine and you have poison. The first player is going to be dealing out cards to people around the table. They will know what everybody has. So I will know that I have given myself a wine and I've given Jeff a poison. On your turn, very easy. All you do is you either decide to drink, which means you flip your card up. If you have a wine, you survive. If you have a poison, you're dead. Or you can choose to swap cards with somebody else around the table without looking. So you don't know what you have. Once the round is over, everybody flips up their cards. Those who have wine have survived. Those who have poison have died and you continue going until there is one lone survivor. Next up, we have Squabblin Goblins and this is from Emma Larkins, who you may know from games like Abandon All Artichokes, which is another great game. This is a two player only, very mean game where each person has three cards, three goblin cards in front of them, a row of three, and then you're going to have a hand of cards and you're playing out either a stacking card or a secret card. If you play a stack card, you get the immediate action. If you play a secret, those are revealed at the end of the game. And basically you are trying to score the most points based on how many cards you have on your side of the table. It is like a 15 minute game. It's super mean. It's super fun. And Jeff and I have really been enjoying this one lately. But that's Squabbling Goblins. Next up, we have a solo game. I have Fishing Lessons, and this is a new button shy game from Scott Alms. Scott Alms has quickly become like my one of my favorite designers specifically for his button shy games. 
He does a lot of their solo games, but in fishing lessons, you are playing a family member of a family who enjoys to go fishing. So you're gonna choose a family member and each family member has different objectives that they would like to achieve. Let me find one. As an example, we have Maya, and Maya wants to find three sea fishes and two bee fishes. So Maya in her little boat is gonna be traveling along the lake, which consists of lake cards and on the other side of the lake cards you got it there's fish with different letters so this card in particular would be great for Maya okay because she wants them B's and C's you are going along and you're going to be playing different lesson cards and the lesson cards are going to show you what cards you can flip and how far you can move and basically you are trying to depending on the difficulty trying to end the round by having the exact amount of the right kind of fish that the fisher person wants. It is super fun. I love this game so, so much. Now we have one that I haven't played yet. I just got this one in the mail. This was actually sent to me for review by Button Shy, as was Squabble and Goblin. So have played, haven't played super tall yet. And to be honest, I don't know much about it. So what it looks like, it's two to three players and I'm pretty sure you're building out a skyline. Don't quote me on it, haven't played it yet, but excited to try this one. And that is by Matt Nevin, Levin. Nat Levin, not Matt, oh my God. Next up, we have Wild Tales, a pirate legacy game. And this is from Dustin Dobson and Milan Zivkovic. This is an 18 card legacy game. It has like a companion app on the web that you can use to follow along the story. It comes with stickers and different secrets that unfold as you play the game. I have played the first four chapters of this and have been having an absolute blast. This is a legacy game, 18 cards, and you can play it solo or at two. I freaking love it. Food Chain Island, Scott Alms, I love this game. This game is basically you are building out a grid of different animals and those animals all have different values. As an example, there's a lizard. Every animal can eat another animal a value of up to three less. So the lizard has a value of four, so he can eat a three, two, or one. And it actually shows him eating a mouse because the most is the next one down on the food chain, which is a little bit sad, but basically you are trying to end the game with one animal left. On your turn, you're moving one space, you're eating animals and you are activating their abilities. It is quick, it is fun. This is a game that I take literally everywhere I go. I love it. Another one of my favorite solo games, we have Ugly Griffin Inn, once again by Scott Alms. This is a game about running an inn. You have a tavern and when people are done at the bar, they're moving up to the inn, but they're very fussy. So you gotta make sure that you're not irking them because if you do, they'll leave. You are trying to end the game with at least eight people in your inn. If seven people leave though, your inn sucks and you lose. Then we have Shades of Ink, and this is by Jay Yeats, and this is a solo RPG game, which I have played. For this game, you do need to print out kind of like a story or character sheet, but basically what you're doing is you're gonna be telling a story based on different prompts that come up from these ink cards, and they're gonna lay like this. So as an example, a prompt might say, it is made of mist, why is it never desperate? And then you're kind of creating a story based on the prompts that you get and then you are defeating what they are called shades and you're just trying to yeah, defeat the shade, win the game, create a story. Really cool little RPG game. Then we have Sprawlopolis from Steven Armani, Danny Devine, and Paul Kluka. And this one is um, like a city builder basically. So you've got different cards that have different patterns and you are trying to build them out based on different objectives and you are just building a sprawling opolis. There's also Agropolis and Naturopolis, but I only have this one and this can be played solo, but it can be played up to four. I've only played it solo, but it's very good. Then we have Battle. Who's calling me? I think that was a butt dial from the Brothers Murph. <laughs> Next up, we have Battlecrest Thalwood's base game by Dustin Dobson and Milan Z Zivkovic, who also did one of these other games now that I don't remember. Which one did they do? Oh, they also did Wild Tales. 
Now, this one I haven't played yet, but it is a skirmish game. So I am very excited to play this with Jeff. It's two player only, but the fact that you can do a skirmish game and 18 cards in a wallet, yeah, that sounds pretty freaking cool. I'm going through these so fast because I have so many of them. Next up from John David Wood, we have Making Manhattan. This is another one that I have not played yet, but this is another two player game where I believe, based on the title, you might be making Manhattan. I think it's another like city builder. It says it plays in 20 minutes. I don't know, but I have it. A lot of these are ones that I got at PAX Unplugged. Every day they would put out new games and every day I was like, what do you got? I'm here to buy it all. Another one I haven't played yet is Robin Gibson's Arcane Bakery Clash. This one is a two player only game and I got this number one because the theme is bakery. I'm pretty sure it's like fighting like you're competing bakers, but I really enjoyed the artwork. I don't know anything about it, except for the fact that it's cute and I really like the color of the wallet. Sometimes that's all it takes, people. Then we have John Belusi's Antinomi. Antinomi, don't know. Haven't played this one yet either. You're gonna start seeing a trend. I think I've only played like 10 of the ones that I own. This is a two player only game and I have learned this one, but basically this one is dealing in different parts of time and you're kind of traveling through like the past and the future and you're like a sorcerer who's trying to gain power. Don't know but I own it. Then we have John Dubois' Avenon, A Clash of Popes. I bought this because I thought it would be funny to play a game about popes. Haven't played it yet. It is a two player only game though. And I thought this would be one that maybe Jeff might be interested in trying. I think Jeff and I just need to like plan a full on button shy game day where we go through as many of these as we can. But yeah, I'm excited to try this one. I mean, if it's about Pope's fighting, that's pretty freaking funny. Another RPG game, and this one I believe is for two players. Yes, this is called, I guess this is it. And it is an RPG game about the end of life. And I am so excited. It's from Caesar Packle. What I love about this game without even playing it is the artwork on the cards. Like, just even look at the back of them. I don't know, you're basically like telling a story about like the end of your days, the end of your life. So I think it's kind of sad, but also maybe a little bit beautiful. Who knows? Last one in this pouch is For Sky by Scott Allen Sizzis. Sizzis. Anyways, this is a two to four player card game and it is kind of like a set collection game where you are um, putting out different types of birds in the forest and there's gonna be two forests and it's almost like Fantasy Realms-esque where you have cards in your hand and you are gonna be scoring them based on objectives compared to one of the two nests that get set out. Jeff and I have played this and we both really did like this one. The art is really pretty if you enjoy birds. You will probably enjoy that game. One pouch down. Second pouch opening. Okay, let's give her. I have Tessie Mussy, and then we also have the Tessie Mussy expansion collection. So this has all of the expansions, including the one that allows you to play it solo. Oddly enough, I have not played this solo yet. Oh no, the solo expansion's in here. This is by Elizabeth Hargrave, who you may know of Wingspan Glory, but Tessie Mussy is a great game where you are basically taking different flowers. You're gonna be taking two cards. One of them is gonna be face up and one is face down, and the person next to you is going to be choosing if they wanna take the face up card or the face down card. Another set collection type of game. You're trying to score points based on the bouquet that you have in front of you. It's fantastic. We have played this at two and four. Always a good time. I am excited to try it solo and we do have all of the expansions. I believe we have all of the expansions thanks to Michelle. From second star to the left who keeps my button shy habit going. Then we have another RPG game and this is called The Family Dinner and it is for two to six players and basically the whole premise is you're sitting around a table having dinner with your family and you're all acting out as different members of the family. We haven't played it yet but I'm really excited. I love the fact that there's like these one shot quick little 18 card RPG games like I love that. Next up we have Rove and this is from Dustin Dobson and Milan Zivkovic. Again I am realizing now that I 
I don't always look at who designs these, but I am going to keep my eye on any that these two do because this game is one of my favorites. It's a solo game where you're trying to manipulate the different modules on the board in order to create a pattern that's been set out at the beginning of the game. It is adorable. It's puzzly. It's fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Then we have an Otter One, and this is by Aaron Andrew Wilson. The artwork on this is so great. Like, oh, they're all upside down. Look at these sassy little otters. I love them. Jeff and I played this, and basically, you are playing out different otter cards that have different objectives. This is one saying, like, you need somebody has to play, like, a card that's lower, or you're trying to get each odd otter. I don't know, we played it once like months ago, but we did have a really good time playing it. It's very cute. There is another otter game that we don't have. I can't remember what it's called, but I definitely want to get it. Another solo game is Rage More, and this is by Bowen Crackle Jackets. I'm really bad with names. This game is very challenging. <laughs> Let me tell you. Basically, there are heroes that you are trying to defeat these different like monsters and creatures with. And so you've got like your heroes in front of you and you've got three different piles of these monsters and you are trying to beat them based on the different symbols that they have. And there's a ton of different things you can do. I have yet to win this game despite having played it like eight times, but it's really good. I enjoy the challenge and it's a different theme that I don't, you know, really play a lot with solo games. We have Zach Connolly's Fruition, which I have not played yet. This is a word association or word type party game and you've got different like types of fruit and then there's different prompts. So this one might be like if it's purple, it'll say name something that starts with an L that's found in the sea. So you could say the Little Mermaid. And then everybody has to agree like, oh yeah, that's right, or that's wrong, or whatever. Haven't played it yet. I was gonna bring this to my work game night, but there were too many of us, and it only plays up to six. Another word game is T.C. Petty the Thirds, Handsome, an elegant word game. Haven't played this one yet, but I, and I, to be honest with you, don't know how it plays. All I know is that I'm absolutely like obsessed with the artwork on these. It's very elegant. Much like the Tessie Messy, I've got a butt ton of Skulls of Sedlick, and this is by Dustin Dobson, once again, the guy who did Wild Tales and all that stuff. Um, and then I have the entire expansion collection. And one other thing I do have upstairs is Michelle from Second Start to Left sent me like a roll and write version of this game or a flip and write version of this game. So the pages for that are upstairs. So in Skulls of Sedlick, you are building out a grid and the different types of skulls and whatever want to be next to certain things. So like, and they score differently. This is what they look like. It's great. I do have the solo expansion, though I haven't played it solo yet. I have played this with Michelle from Second Star to Left and we had a great time playing it and I have all of the expansions. It's super fun. This is like, I think this is one of Michelle's absolute favorites. Okay, then we have Rob Kramer's Turbo Drift, which is a racing game in a 18 card game. I really liked this one and Jeff was not really a fan because I don't really think he was in the mood to play it, but basically there's different tracks and you're building out the tracks like this and you are trying to avoid different obstacles with your car and it's silly, it's fun. I mean, how can you not enjoy Literally, it's an 18 card racing game. I love racing because I'm very, very fast. That's probably why Jeff didn't like it because I did beat him. Then we have Time Travel Entertainment Inc. by Alexander Bennett. And this is another RPG game that we have not played yet. But what sold me on this one, as if anything needs to sell me on any of them, how many players does this play with? It doesn't say. What sold me on this one was once again, like, look at the artwork. Like, I, I love it. It's so retro and weird, and I don't know anything about it other than that it's an RPG game that I am very excited to play. I don't even know how many people can play this game. Next up, we have Chip Bovey, Bovey's, Chip Bovey, Smoke and Mirrors, which I also haven't played. Um, this is for two to five players, and once again, like the artwork on these cards, I love, like even the backs of them. I don't know what this game is about. I assume it is about being a magician. Then we have Jade Treats Cunning Folk. I played this one 
forever ago, like last year. Um, I played it with Michelle and it's really, really good. It's basically like, it's like a witch trial kind of or a witch hunt. And there's like, you could be a good witch or you could be a liar. And there's like different types of characters. And it is kind of like a bluffing game where you're trying to, you know, convince other people that you're not this thing. It's really, really fun. Also one of Michelle's favorite games. Then we have another one I haven't tried yet, but this is Marty Koa's Adder, a real-time chase system. So this is a real-time game, and I don't know anything about it, but there's a bunch of patterns. I don't know, but I was like, real-time game in a see-through wallet. Sign me up. Two left. Okay, we have Kevin Ellenberg's Death Valley, which is a game about... Death Valley. I have played this one solo and basically like there's um, different landscape cards and they give you different like scoring objectives and stuff and you're just kind of building out Death Valley. It's been a while since I've played it. This was not my favorite solo experience. I have a feeling it plays better. It would play better at two players but it's like a quick 15 minute game and it's beautiful. And last but not least of the ones that I currently have in my possession is Unsurmountable, another Scott Elms game. And this one you are trying to build out different pathways on like a mountain and things like that. And you're trying to, you know, there's different triggers on the cards and you've got a camp, you've got a rescue helicopter, and basically you're building out a path like grid in order to kind of rescue people and score objective points and all that good stuff. It's a very fun solo game. Now, that's a lot. And yet, I have more on the way. So you're probably wondering, Jamie, what, what, what is this one coming on the way? Very glad you asked. Number one, I have Numpsters ordered. I did the Kickstarter for Numpsters, which is a new solo game that is all about numbers. Numbsters. And then with that, I added in, it was this big. I know nothing about it, but it was the only add-in option. And anytime I do a Kickstarter for Button Shy, any of the options for add-ons that I don't have, I always get. So that's what I got. I also have from their, they do like a reprint campaign every now and then. So from the reprint, I have Revolver Noir, Spaceship, Wonder Tales, Tides, Mint Julep, and Potion Class coming. So that's everything. Now I am going to continue to add to this collection. Pretty much any solo game that Button Shy puts out, I will be buying. I love them. If you haven't tried Button Shy, I highly, highly recommend that you give it a go, especially if you know, you're traveling and you wanna take some games with you. There's so many options. My favorites, in case you were wondering, here are some of my favorites based on the ones that I played. I just have like such a mess. I love it. Ugly Griffin Inn, excellent solo game. Food Chain Island, excellent solo game. And Vino Morte, excellent party game. Squabbling Goblins, great two-player game. Four Sky, beautiful birds. Fishing Lessons, adorable and also super fun. Tessie Messy is just a great overall game. And then Rove is one of my favorite solo experiences. Those are all of my button shy games. I feel no... I feel no regret. I will continue to buy them. I would be interested to know down below, have you tried Button Shy? What is your favorite Button Shy game? How do you store your Button Shy games? Are there any that you're looking forward to? Are there any that are not in my pile of goodies that you're like, Jamie, you need to get this one? Or are there any that I said that we haven't played yet that you're like, you need to get on that? I would love to know because I am all in on Button Shy's. All in, baby. That is all that I have for you today. If you're interested in buying board games, not button shies, because typically I haven't seen them at any friendly local gaming stores. Um, so you have to buy them directly from Button Shy, either on their website or um, through one of their Kickstarters. But if you're interested in buying other board games, you should check your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. If you would like to see me play some of these games, um, I'll be doing that on Twitch every now and then. So you can check us out there. I hope to see you again soon. Now I say goodbye. Goodbye. Here. I just need to remember because I definitely just added another one to my iPad hex. Perhaps it's not on here. Oh, for, excuse me. Anyways, this is by Elizabeth Brothers Murph or Jeff. One of them keeps calling our group chat. Speaking of playing them on Twitch, I am going to be doing that tonight. I'll be playing that one. I'll be playing that one.
I'll be playing that one. Not those. Maybe that one. Not this one. Maybe that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. No, no, no. I think I've played all of the solo ones already. So good. Ah, fishing lessons. That's the one I was looking for. Can I play you solo? I wish I had more solo games. Moi. I just think there's something so satisfying about the way that these just stack together, you know? I love it. I can't play all of these tonight. Try. I could try to play them all. Look at that for now. 